It automatically finds the location of the television, and it automatically calibrates the projector to the connect. And this only has to happen once. So the user just actually points a loom room at their TV, and it does all the rest. So it's easy to set up in almost any room. And you can see the paper for more, more details about the calibration. <coughs> So because we're not projecting onto a flat white screen, we must adapt our projection to the furniture. And this is a, through a process called radiometric and geometric compensation. So on the left, you can see a compensated image. That's what we're projecting. And on the right is a live camera view. That's what the viewer is seeing. All right, so you can't fix everything. So if you mount your TV in front of a window, we can't compensate for transparent glass. So there are failure cases for this. But in general, all of these uh, peripheral visuals are in your peripheral vision, and so those uh, artifacts are minimized. And so this is showing you know, some, some real video of what the user might see. So we present 11 peripheral visuals, which we call illusions. We prototype illusions which we believe represent the primary dimensions of the design space. And this represents an initial survey and is not exhaustive. So the most obvious way to increase immersion is to simply extend the content from the television screen out into the room, replacing the physical reality with the game's reality. So instead of rendering the full periphery, we can focus only on the high contrast features, for instance, highlighting only the edges. And this gives the peripheral content a stylized look. So with the next illusion, focus plus context selective, only certain game elements escape the television. For instance, with a first-person shooter, we can bleed only weapons fire or explosions. Or we can display key characters or items um, in the periphery, so markers representing those. We can also display the game content only on the back wall of the TV and not on the furniture. So here we're masking out the furniture, making it appear as if the game is being played beyond the wall of the room. So a loom room can also change the physical appearance of the room. We can saturate the colors of the room. We can make the room black and white. We can make it look like a cartoon. We can also distort reality entirely. So with the radial wobble illusion, we distort and reproject the room texture, and this warps our sense of physical reality. We can also generate completely abstract illusions, which greatly enhance the peripheral motion, but do not borrow content directly from any game. So this is an example of a moving grid. And then here we show an example of a moving star field. So this is a randomly generated star field, but it's moving corresponding to the player's camera in the game. We can also bring the lighting from the game into the room. So this is a one-to-one -one mapping between the lighting in the game and the lighting in your physical space with lighting and shadows. And this is using the 3D geometry. So with the snow illusion, we can have snowflakes that fall and then they land on your furniture. So they're physically reacting with your particular living room. They can bounce off the furniture and they react to the speed of the race car. So you speed up and they blow off. And finally, a game object could fall out of the screen, bounce on your floor, and roll onto your coffee table. So this is a shared physics simulation between the virtual world and the physical world. Finally, all of our illusions can be easily combined with one another, which makes them an easy and flexible design palette for game designers. And so here we're showing three of the illusions paired together. So these illusions can greatly enhance gaming experiences in a variety of ways. So they obviously increase the player's sense of immersion and their sense of presence. They can provide additional, or they, sorry, they can induce apparent motion, so make you feel like you're moving. They can provide additional gaming information. They can provide a sense of atmosphere or theme. And they can support entirely new game mechanics. So Loom Room enables designers to explore this entire spectrum of the reality virtuality continuum. So what this means is, um, basically, you can have the physical environment, your living room, you can do uh, kind of the focus plus context illusions and completely cancel out your physical environment for entirely virtual reality or anywhere in between. So most augmented reality systems take a virtual object and put it in the physical environment, and we can take your physical environment and adapt it to the virtual world. 
So finally, illusions can be dependent or independent of the underlying game content. So illusions like appearance are completely independent of the game, whereas focus plus context illusions are directly tied to the game content. Okay, so how do you connect these illusions with the game content? We explore a range of options that include building experiences from the ground up and modifying or hacking existing games. So ideally, you have source code access, and Illumroom is directly integrated through an API. So through this API, you can turn illusions on and off, you can update the position of the game's player, uh, the player's camera, or render a wide field of view camera pass to use with the focus plus context illusions. But for existing games, we don't have source code access. So we can drive these, using other, uh, drive these illusions using other means. So for instance, with the grid and the star field illusions, we just need the player's camera motion. And so what we can do is we do a real-time optical flow calculation to derive the camera motion just from the image of the game, and then we can use that to drive these abstract illusions. We can also capture a significant amount of game state just from a game controller. So, for instance, if a user is playing a first-person shooter and they press the right trigger button, well then we know that they're probably firing, and then we can trigger a radio wobble illusion. So uh, users could script or mod games to connect controller inputs to illusions. So the Illumroom illusions work with any game uh, or game genre imaginable and video content. And many of these examples focus on a first person shooter, and this is simply because there are not many robust open source uh, games available, and there's this really great game, Red Eclipse, which is an open source first person shooter. So this could be applied to a wide variety of game genres, um, and we use that for source code access. So Loomroom can also be extended beyond just gaming to extend uh, the viewing experience of film or uh, broadcast television. So we can apply all the same effects to a video stream, and we can even do abstract illusions. So uh, in order to make that demo possible, we actually created this little uh, two-camera rig. So one is a focus camera, uh, you know, high-res HD content, and the other has a wide-angle lens on it and is our peripheral content. And when then you stitch those two things together, you get focus plus context content for video. Here's just another shot of that. So we evaluated these 11 points in the design space through two user studies, and we focused on end users and on game designers. And we were primarily interested in determining user uh, perceptions along different dimensions in this design space. So we first studied uh, 10 gamers, or end users, and they had a variety of game playing ability. They interacted with the illusions paired with video game content in a randomized order. And they engaged in a card sorting task where they rated and ranked these illusions around various dimensions of the design space that we discussed earlier. Um, and this was not designed to find the best illusion because there isn't one. This was designed to uh, support careful critique and comparison in the users among different dimensions of the design space. We also conducted a study with 15 professional game designers where we brought them in, showed them the illusions, and then they found them. Uh, although some of the users expressed that they were also overwhelming, so there's a lot of information there. And also game designers said that they may not hold up to long-term play. So basically these illusions um, may not be used for uh, extreme long periods of gaming. So a nice middle ground then is this focus plus context selective. So this is bleeding selective elements out into your world. And one user said, you know, out of all these, this would be the most useful and immersive without being distracting. It seems like a nice sweet spot. So the grid and star field illusions imparted a great sense of motion, however they didn't provide additional game content or information, so they're uh, independent of the underlying game. And some users expressed that, well, if I can have it, I'd rather have a focus plus context illusion and get extra game information as well. So the appearance uh, worked very well. Uh, one user saying, you know, this could just be in my living room all the time, even when a game's not playing. So, radio wobble was another magical effect. Uh, however, it distorts the user's physical environment, and so it could be um, off-putting. So basically, this should be used for special emphasis, and game designers uh, emphasize this point that you know, things like this should be used for you know, special emphasis and not used all the time. But they can be very powerful when used, seldomly. So, participants also like the interplay between the physical and the virtual in the balance of the snow and the lighting illusion. They made them feel really in the game world and created a nice sense of atmosphere. But because these illusions are closely tied to the physical environment, they work uh, well when they're tied closely to the game content. So going forward, we only scratched the surface of what is possible with the living room. We envisioned many more illusions, including pushing the envelope on what's possible with augmented reality gaming. 
We also envision many more triggers. So, for instance, imagine watching a James Bond film, and there's an explosion in the film, and that triggers an explosion in your living room. Uh, finally, we uh, want to explore uh, more game genres, which I think I already said, and, uh, and also the form factor, the computational requirements, and the cost must be determined before this can be in every in your wor world. The Loom Room rethinks how we consume entertainment in our living room. We've only begun to scratch the surface of what's possible in this space, and we invite the community to come and explore this with us. Thank you.